You can even use some counting to guide you, maybe inhaling for the count of four, exhaling for the count of four, something like that. This constricted throat breath is our ujjayi breath, also known as soham pranayama. Inhaling with the sound of so, exhaling with the sound of hum. The sound of the ocean is also what it's known as, a breath of many names, I guess. Let's do one more full cycle. On and inhale, we're going to reach both of the arms up and you can keep the eyes closed if you want. If that helps you presence yourself here at the start of class. And then we're going to lower the right fingertips to the mat and keep reaching out of those fingertips. And then let the left hand rest on the right ear. As the left ear draws toward the left shoulder, the left hand then just acts as an extra weight. So don't think of a pulling motion from that hand. Think of it as just added weight as we stretch out through the neck. Keep anchoring those right fingertips, that right shoulder blade down. Find your ujjayi breath again if you've lost it. On an inhale, gently release, return the head to neutral, reach both arms up, and then we'll go to the other side. So left fingertips come down, right hand acts as a weight on the left ear, right ear reaches toward right shoulder. Keep reaching out of those fingertips. Keep connected to your ujjayi breath. Inhale to again gently release, come back to neutral, reach both arms up, and we're going to twist to the right. Left hand outside of the left knee, right fingertips can come to the mat, or maybe that hand comes to the low back. Continue to deepen the twist on exhales, think of really wringing out the spine. On an inhale, we'll come back up through center, and exhale to the other side. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, we're gonna rock forward, hands and knees. If you've been kneeling this whole time, your knees maybe want a little bit of liberation. So straighten out one leg, and then the other. And you can do that on both sides a couple of times. And then when you arrive at a tabletop again, We'll take a moment to warm up the wrists. So check that middle fingers point forward, check that wrists are underneath shoulders, thinking bone alignment here, not flesh alignment. And then begin to do some circles over those wrists. Keep gripping into the fingertips the entire time as though if there were a piece of paper underneath your hands, you would be gripping in to where the paper would rise in the middle and crumple up a little bit. Go the other direction. We can find neutral once again. We're gonna inhale this right arm open and then exhale, thread that shoulder, or thread the arm through. Shoulder comes to the mat. Right ear comes to the mat. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, thread it through. One more, inhale, lift. On the exhale, once we're through, we'll hold. You might even bring the left hand to the low back, opening those shoulders a little bit more. 
Find your Ujjayi breath if you've lost it. Use an inhale to plant the left hand and reach that right arm back up. Exhale, right palm plants. Let's go to the other side. Inhale, left up. Exhale, thread it through. Inhale, lift. Exhale, through. Last one, inhale, lift. Exhale, thread it through and we're gonna hold. Again, maybe right hand comes to low back, stacking the shoulders a little bit more. Use an inhale to plant the right hand, unfurl, lifting this left arm up, and exhale, lower that hand back to the mat. Slide the hands forward, a handprint. We're gonna do a couple more of those wrist circles, going either direction. And then when you feel okay to do so, curl those toes under, press the hips back and up, downward facing dog. Now this is your first down dog of the day, so you might want to add in some movement, maybe bicycling of heels, swaying of the hips, bending deeply into the legs while you press the torso back. I encourage you to do something that you wouldn't normally do, or if you're doing something you normally would do, then just alter the pace of it. Slow it down or speed it up. Change one element of whatever you're doing. And today we're going to do traditional, or not traditional, sorry. We're gonna do sun salutation A's, which although not labeled as traditional are often the most common sun salutation you see and encounter in a class. So we can start by looking forward and you can determine here if you wanna step one foot forward or hop forward, totally up to you. Once you arrive at the front edge of your mat, inhale, lengthen the spine, look forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, lift those palms up. This is where we're gonna do a slight variation. Let your thumbs grip around each other. As you exhale to the right hips, go to the left. So we're just adding a little side bend here. Inhale through center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale through center, soften the knees to exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step or hop back. Once you arrive there, we are gonna move through a modified vinyasa for this first one. So lower the knees to the mat, lower chest and chin, Ashtangasana. Inhale, snake that torso through, cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale, whether by using the knees or through push up, press up and back, downward facing dog. Give yourself a couple of breaths here. Again, a chance to find movement or to find stillness. And when you're ready, look forward. At the bottom of your next exhale, we're gonna hop, or step. Inhale, long spine, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, lift those hands up, cross thumbs the awkward way. Exhale, arms to the left, hips to the right. Inhale, up through center. Exhale, other direction. Inhale, up through center. Soften those knees, exhale, fold. Plant the hands, again, step or hop back. If you step back, step back with the foot that feels least natural, because you probably didn't use it last time. And then this time you can do that same vinyasa we just did, or you can lower halfway down, elbows hug to ribs. Inhale, pull the torso through and up. Exhale, half push up and back. 
downward facing dog. All right, we're gonna do two more of those. I encourage you to find a rhythm that works for you, movement that works for you. You can look toward the hands, step or hop on the bottom of your next exhale. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. This time, guys, we'll inhale, arms up. And then exhale, swan dive. Arms out wide, fold down. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, soften, plant those hands, step or hop back, maybe to chaturanga. Inhale, pull through, upward facing dog. Exhale, half push up and back, downward facing. Two breaths here, this is our last one. At the bottom of the exhale, step or hop. Inhale, long spine, exhale, lower. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, hands back up. Exhale, soft knees, swan dive forward. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, plant those hands, step or hop. Inhale, lift through cobra or up dog. Exhale, lower, press up and back, downward facing dog. Now give yourself a couple of breaths here. Just notice what you're feeling in the body at this moment. Notice if the body seems to be excited about fast movement, about building heat, or if the body feels maybe a little sluggish or heavy today. We're here to observe and to respond, not to judge. As you feel ready, we're gonna inhale this left leg up. Exhale, knee toward nose or forehead, hips stay high. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, in. This time, inhale, extend. Exhale, bring it in, but look forward. Keep rocking more, 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 more. Lower that left foot. Inhale, rise up. High lunge. And give yourself a moment here to just stabilize. Think of drawing left hip back, right hip forward. Anchoring that tailbone straight down. Lifting the right knee, reaching out of the right heel. And then bend into the left leg any amount. Now we're gonna work on waking up our shoulders a little bit. And to do this first part, you're gonna think of letting your right hand, your right arm drop in front of you and your left arm drop behind you. So don't think about it too much. Just go right hand forward, left arm back. And then keep using that momentum, keep letting them drop once they reach the top. So we're doing these opposite direction arm circles. Maybe you even speed it up a bit. And now you're so focused on your arms, you're probably not noticing all the stabilizing that your legs are doing. Go for five, four, three, two, one. Reach those arms up. Exhale, bring the hands down, frame this left foot. Lower the right knee, inhale, chest, chin up. Exhale, straighten both legs any amount to look back. Inhale to bend. Exhale to straighten. One more. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Now step this right foot forward a little bit, closing the stance to where you feel like you have a solid foundation. And we want both feet on parallel tracks, not on a tightrope. All toes point forward, right hip draws forward and down, left hip draws back and up. And then let the head be heavy. Maybe shake it, yes or no. Mm -hmm. 
Notice the energy from the shoulders is maybe moving downward in this posture. Two more breaths. On an inhale, soften into this left knee, look forward. We're going to work on those same hops we did last class. So you can plant the hands shoulder distance apart, grip into the fingertips, slide the left foot back toward the center of the mat, lift the right leg up. All right, so first option is to work on leaning into the fingertips, lifting the left heel. All right, and our shoulders protract in that process, lifting up. Our second option is as we lean forward, this right leg reaches up, it stays reaching as I bend into the left knee and then hop off of that left foot, maybe heel kicking toward the bum. All right, and always that's also on exhales. And finally, we do want to eventually hop switch. So you can go straight into that, bending the left knee, hopping and switching the legs in the air. Now, the one thing to think about here is being as light as you can, as controlled as you can be. Think of slowing down, think of landing softly, whatever it is you're doing. And then finally, find your way to where your right foot is planted, your left leg is lifted. And we're going to lower the left foot down behind us, lower that knee to the mat, Maybe slide the right foot forward a bit. Set up for your low lunge. Yeah, a chance to be head up after being head down. So again, same cues here, except on opposite legs this time. Right hip back, left hip forward. Anchor the tailbone down, and then bend into the right leg. Try to feel the opening on the left hip flexor here. Now, right hands on right knee, we're going to inhale this left arm up, thumb in fist. Exhale, twist to the right, tuck that elbow outside of the right knee. And then from here, two options. Option one, palm to palm. I press my hands to each other in order to broaden through the front side of the body. Option two is going to be to bend this back leg my left hand can just stay at my hip. I'm going to reach back with my right hand to find that back foot. Wherever you are, focus on the twist here. Focus on the opening of this left hip. Let the breath be soft but controlled. Notice how every exhale is an invitation to sink a little bit deeper. Every inhale is an opportunity to expand. Wherever you are, if your back leg is bound, go ahead and release it. And then all of us can rise back up through center, reach both arms up, and then exhale, plant those hands down, curl the left toes under, step back, plank pose. Opportunity here to move through a vinyasa, to find a down dog, to do scapular push-ups, to do anything that feels good in the body. We'll all meet back and downward facing dog. And we're just going to repeat that little set on the right side. So inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, knee toward nose, hips stay high. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, in, but lean forward. Keep rocking. Lower the right foot down and bring the torso up right into a high lunge. Again, right hip back, left hip forward, tailbone down, then bend into the front leg. 
Lift that back knee, reach out of that back heel. Arms can come up. You're probably like, oh yeah, we did that weird thing. We're gonna do it again. So this time we're gonna think of right hand dropping back, left hand dropping forward. So just let that happen and then use the momentum that's created to enter into a second round. You might speed it up a little bit. Going for five, four, three, two, one. Bring both arms up and exhale, hinge forward. Fingertips to the mat, lower that left knee to inhale, chest chin up. Exhale, straighten both legs, any amount, look back. Inhale to bend. Exhale to straighten. Last one, inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten, step that left foot forward a bit. Feet on parallel tracks, all toes forward. Bend into this right knee to draw that hip back and up. And really think of the movement originating at the pelvic girdle. So draw the right hip back and up, left hip forward and down, and then straighten the right leg any amount. Let the torso be heavy. Find your breath. If you feel any excess heat in the body, you can always do some open mouth exhales. That can be really grounding and nourishing. One more full breath. Inhale, bend softly into that right knee. Look forward, plant the hands underneath the shoulders, slide the right foot to the middle of the mat, lift the left leg up. All right, jumping is exhausting. So know that if you're like dreading this a little bit, that's okay. The body dreads moving from what was kind of nourishing and static into what is a little more tumultuous. So on exhales, again, either rock forward, press into the hands, think of hugging those shoulders toward the ears, and then back on inhales. You can do the single leg hops. This right or left leg keeps reaching as the right knee bends, and that foot heel kicks. or you can move into the hop switches. Try to keep the torso as still as you can in that case. Eventually we'll all meet with the left foot planted, lower the right toes down, lower that knee, adjust your stance any amount by bringing the torso upright, draw right hip forward, left hip back, and then anchor the tail down and bend into this left knee any amount. Feel the opening on the right hip. Inhale this right arm up, thumb and fist. We'll exhale, twist to the left. Tucking that elbow outside the left knee. Again, our options are to bring palm to palm or to bring right hand toward left hip and reach back with the left hand to bind the left foot. Or, no, that's the right. Sometimes when I'm all twisted, I forget which appendage is which. It is the right foot. Focus on the twist. Focus on that right hip. Gently release if you're in the bind. All of us can inhale, bring the arms up. And exhale, hinge forward. Curl the right toes under. Step the left foot back. We're into a plank pose. Now, instead of doing another vinyasa here, we're going to plant the right palm or forearm beneath the nose. Roll to the outer edge of the right foot. Find your side plank. Inhale, left arm up, thumb against index finger now. On an exhale, lower the right hip. Left fingertips sweep the mat. 
Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Lift that left leg. Hold for three, two, one. Bend the knee and step toward the right hand. Nice. Man, you guys made that look easy. <laughs> okay, with the left foot planted, we're gonna bring both hands inside of it and heel toe the left foot to the edge of the mat. From here, we're gonna rock the hips back on exhales and forward on inhales. Back on exhale, forward on inhale. This time when we rock back, we're gonna hold here for a moment. So this is an abducted half splits. So the left foot is reaching as though toward the left corner of the mat. We're drawing away from midline. However, we're still in a split. So we're gonna do a couple things here. First of all, crawl the hands to be in line with the calf, kind of the top of the calf, between the calf and the knee and tense those fingertips round through the back side of the body. Yeah, you just, you know where we're headed here. We did this the other day, but we did it in a straight line split. This one oftentimes is a little bit easier. Okay, so pressing that away, rounding through the shoulders, we're going to exhale, think of lifting this left foot and lower. Lift and lower. If it's not lifting, that's okay. The trying is the doing here. One more lift and lower. Bend into that left knee, come forward into lizard pose. <sighs> All right, we're gonna stay here for a moment. So you can either work on lowering the torso toward the mat, maybe bringing forearms down, or if you're liking the twists that we've been doing in our lunges, in our low lunges, then you can think of doing a twist here by planting the right hand beneath the nose, bending the right foot, and then opening up to the left, reaching back. And even if you don't grab the foot, still reaching is doing the twist. If you do bind the foot, then that's lovely as well. Wherever you are, check that your shoulders are softened away from your ears. Think of a long line on the front side of the body across the collarbones. So the shoulder blades can gently hug toward each other. Let the hips be heavy on every exhale. Gently release if you have the bind. Bring yourself back to your palms if you were lowered. And then we're gonna ease out of this, drag the left heel back a little bit until you're in a 90 degree with both legs. So we're in this shortened lunge. Yeah, nice. All right, now I'm gonna cue an arm balance here. As always, only go as far as feels interesting in your body. Don't worry about any other step. We, we build awareness of these shapes step by step. So just go to whatever step feels best. We're gonna start by tucking the chin toward the chest and grabbing the back of the left leg, like around the heel with the left hand to work that left shoulder under any amount. Now that's, that's location one. You might stay right here and be like, ooh, I have a good stretch going. Great, stay there. You can also plant the left palm, kind of where that, that L between the index and the thumb would be behind the left heel. All right, and then plant the right palm shoulder distance apart from it. Grip into the fingertips. We're gonna tuck the back toes under and lift that knee, lift the hips. Now we're gonna step forward, bring the right knee to the back of the right arm and then lower the hips. So you might be here and be like, holy moly, this is weird and intense and there's a lot of compression going on. And this may be where you chill for a moment. Well, not necessarily chill, but hang out for a moment. If you're still with me, we're hugging those elbows gently in so that they push straight back. You can heel toe this left foot forward. And then I want you to think of pressing into all fingertips, gripping, and then lean forward. Maybe that left foot lifts, 
Maybe you can lean forward enough, press the mat away enough that the right toes lift. The left leg is hugging into the outside of the left arm, right knees pressing into the back of the right arm. And if you're lifted, go ahead and lower. If you're in a funky, weird shape with it, go ahead and get out of it. And let's just take a moment to sit onto our bums, let the legs come wide, get those wrists to shake. That is Eka Pada Vakasana 2. So Eka being one, Pada being leg or foot, Vakasana being crow. So our one-legged crow, the right leg was in crow pose, the left leg was in an abducted shape. So from here, that left hip's probably feeling a little cramped from what we just did. So we're going to check that the toes point straight up and flex gently back. Inhale, a long spine reach, both arms up. And then on an exhale, I want you to think of tilting your torso over your right leg. So it's the side of your body that would touch the right leg. You can bring your right elbow down inside of the leg if you tilt far enough. But we're just really creating space for that left hip to open. Keep reaching out of the left fingertips out of the left heel. Keep pulling that left sit bone down toward the mat. On an inhale, let's come back up through center and exhale, release the hands down. From here, we're gonna go into some adduction. And the way that we'll do it is we'll swing the right leg across to meet the left. So now we're hanging our feet off the side of the mat. And then crawl the torso to where the shoulders are square to the front. It's kind of funky. So the shoulders are square to the front, hands are planted. I'm going to swing the right leg back now and try to either tuck the toes under or bring the top of the foot to the mat. So I'm trying to stack my right hip on top of my left leg. My left toes are still flexed. And now from here, I can lower the torso down any amount. That right hip might creep forward, but that's fine. Again, I'm pressing into the top of the right foot or into the toes if they're curled under. And just try to soften the torso down. Keep reaching out of the left heel. You might find a nice stretch of the outer left hip here. Let's take two more breaths, really softening into the shape. It's always easier to soften when we're lying on the mat. And then on an inhale, begin to press the torso back up. Now we're gonna leave this in a different way than we entered it. So we do need to get those right toes to curl under. If the left leg is making that impossible, you can always decrease the angle between the legs and maybe even bend the left leg to curl those right toes under. And then we're gonna find three-legged down dog, left leg is lifted. Bend that left heel towards sit bone. Let's do some big circles of that left knee. And then the other direction. And now from here, opportunity to stay here or to flip the dog. If you're gonna flip the dog, angle the right fingers out slightly, rock forward toward three-legged plank, lower the left toes behind you, pivot on the right foot, press them out away with the right hand, lift those hips, keep reaching the hips open, and then we move through side plank and back to downward facing dog. Very nice. All right, take one breath here. And then look forward, rock forward to plank. This time left palm or forearm comes beneath the nose. Roll to the outer edge of the left foot. Reach right arm up, thumb against index finger now. 
Lower the left hip, right fingertips. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Try to lift this right leg for three, two, one. Bend that knee, step it toward the left hand. Yeah. Okay, let's bring both hands inside of that right foot, heel toe it out to the side. And we'll do those inhales to bend and exhales to rock the hips back, straighten that right leg any amount. Inhale forward, exhale backward. One more, inhale forward, exhale backward. And we're gonna hold here, drag the tented fingertips inside the calf, press the mat away, round through the shoulders, feel the navel draw in. That right leg might hug in toward the right arm as we do this, but we're gonna exhale, try to lift that right foot and lower, lift, lower, lift, lower, last one, lift, lower, find lizard, rocking forward. And again, opportunity to find the forearms, opportunity to plant the left palm, bend the back leg, and reach around with the right hand. Wherever you are, just think of staying broad through the front side of the body. Keep those shoulders down and toward each other on the back. Find your breath. Soften those hips down. Every exhale, let them soften just a little bit more. Release the bind if you have it. Come up to your palms if you are further forward. And then crawl the hands toward the center of the mat, sliding that right heel back a bit until you have 90 degree bends into both knees. Arm balance, opportunity number two, or side two. All right, so from here, tuck the chin in, use the right hand to press against the back side of that right leg. Work the right shoulder under, maybe plant the palm with the heel more or less inside of the L of the index and thumb. Plant the left hand shoulder distance apart. To me, that stance always feels a little narrow here. So if that's any help to hear that cue. Now grip into the fingertips. Again, think of pulling the edges of a paper inward, lifting a bit in the center. Curl the left toes under, we're gonna lift that left knee Hop that foot in, bring the knee or even the shin to the back of the left elbow. Now, our elbows want to splay out here, so keep hugging them in until you feel them pointing straight back. Now, if you look forward, you might begin to heel toe this right foot forward and maybe it can lift. Maybe you can lean forward and keep pressing the mat away, engaging the shoulders in the same way we have all night to lift the left toes off the mat. Find a moment wherever you are, and then slowly soften out of it. Come to a seat, legs wide. Circle out the wrists. We can do some flicks of the fingers. And then we'll inhale the arms up. Check that all the toes point straight up and are flexed back. And then this time we're going to think of side bending to the left leg. Maybe the left elbow lowers inside of the left leg. Maybe the right fingertips reach the toes. Keep reaching out of the right fingertips, anchoring that right hip down so that you can feel the stretch there. Find your breath. On an inhale, reach tall back up through center. And 
exhale, let the hands come down. So we'll do that adductive pose again. So this time, swing the right leg until it is perpendicular, sorry, <laughs> parallel to the front edge of the mat. So your feet are hanging off the long edge. Work the torso forward as you swing the left leg around. So we want ultimately our legs to be perpendicular to each other. We're reaching out of the right heel. Our toes are still flexed. That'll keep the leg engaged. Press into the top of the left foot or bring those toes to the mat. Relax the torso forward any amount. We're focusing on finding a stretch in the outer right hip here. More and more breath. Use an inhale to bring the torso back up, planting the hands. And this is again where we're gonna to try to bring the right leg up into a three-legged down dog. So you can press into the hands, lift the hip, drag that right leg back and up. Reach heel towards sit bone, do some circles with that knee. And the other direction. And then opportunity to stay here or to lightly, lightly, slightly angle the left fingertips out. Rock toward plank, lower the right toes, pivot on the left foot, and then press the hips up, reaching this right arm back. To get out of it, right arm comes back in line. Side plank, plank, downward facing dog. Nice. All right, from here, we're gonna lift this left leg up. I want you to exhale knee across the body toward the right elbow. Inhale, lift. Exhale, cross. Inhale, lift. Exhale, cross. Inhale, lift. This time we're gonna come into pigeon. So left knee toward left wrist, ankle toward right wrist. Again, that angle can be greatly diminished to allow for more um, focus on the hips. More than anything, we want hips square and level. That might mean propping up the left sit bone. It might mean bringing the ankle in toward the right hip flexor. Now, because we've been, we've had a couple opportunities to bind this back leg, I am going to show that again. Um, it might mean, for me, I like to decrease the angle of the front leg more than what would be my maximum if I were going to go forward into pigeon pose. That just gives a little more stability here. Draw left hip back, right hip forward. Left hand can come to left knee or to the mat in front of you on tented fingers. And I like to kind of rock forward to liberate the back leg and then reach back with my right hand. Now we want to keep the shoulders as square as we can here. That might mean grabbing with one hand. It might mean like sometimes grabbing with two hands actually makes the balance easier and makes keeping the shoulders square easier if you have the mobility to make that grab. This is also where a belt or a towel can come in handy to give a little more length. Now if that back leg is bound and you're loving it, then stay there. You can play with alternately pulling heel in and kicking the foot into the hands. If you're like, ooh, I know I love pigeon when I'm like softened forward, then move into that. Do whatever seems like it would feel best in your body. If you are forward, I encourage you to try to find something for the space between the eyebrows to rest on. So you can stack your fists and rest that space on your fists. You can have a single fist, you can have it on the ground. You can be on your elbows. 
and rest your forehead, I guess, kind of the base of the thumbs. That's a great marma point that softens through the face muscles, relaxes the eyes. I distinctly remember the very first time I consciously relaxed my face muscles, <laughs> which maybe sounds crazy, but I think I tend to hold expression on my face pretty constantly. And it was in my seventh grade PE class that Coach Skinner cued that. It was in our yoga unit, which was about a day long. And man, it was glorious, the relaxing of the face muscles. So allow yourself to sink into that gloriousness right now. On an inhale, wherever you are, begin to make your way out of it, whatever it is. And we need to find our way back to downward dog to go to the other side. Actually, yes, that is what we're gonna do. Okay, <laughs> sorry, find your way back to down dog. There's another shape I like to cue out of pigeons sometimes, but I don't think we have enough time today. We'll do it next time. Give yourself a moment to bicycle heels, really bending one knee and then the other in your down dog. And see if you can just feel that difference between your hips after a really long pigeon hold. And when you feel ready, we'll inhale this right leg up. Exhale, knee across the body towards the left elbow. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, across. Inhale, back. Exhale, across. This time, inhale, back, and we'll exhale into our pigeon. And we had that whole progression last time. And we will do it again this time. So if you bent the back leg, then you can start by decreasing the angle of the front knee, allowing yourself a little more stability. Draw right hip back, left hip forward. Feel that stability through the pelvis. And then maybe bring both sets of fingertips in front of the front leg to bend the back leg up. From there, I like to move right hand to the meat above my right knee and reach back with my left hand to grab the left leg, squaring up the shoulders. From there, maybe you join both hands. If you have softened forward, that is lovely too. And if you found the leg and then want to soften forward. You can always increase the angle of that front leg again to get deeper into the outer hip as you melt the torso down. Always, if there's any weirdness that you feel, sometimes, you know, we pinch muscle in a weird way or just come into something oddly, always feel free to adjust. There's this weird, stigma in yoga against wiggling sometimes. This idea that, oh, we need to find the pose and be in complete stillness, but really we're just exploring the body, the breath, the mind here. So do whatever you need to do to feel good. Again, find a way to release through the face. You can always bend the elbows, rest the head on the hands or use stacked fist, single fist, or floor, whatever feels best. This is a longer hold, so just notice if your body relishes that 
or if it feels really intense, if it's hard to be still in a shape, not, necess not necessarily still, but to hold a shape anyway. Begin to gently make your way out of this particular shape. And we will move through down dog to keep things symmetrical to the very end. Again, wiggle side to side. From here, we need to make our way to our butts so we can just lower the knees, cross the ankles, and rock back. Keep it simple. And then we can grab the backs of the legs and we're going to roll onto the back, hug the knees in and rock side to side for a moment. Massaging out the low back. We'll keep this left leg drawn in, extend the right leg forward on the mat, interlace the fingers below the left knee and draw the knee toward the left armpit. This uh, shape translates to wind relieving posture and it's thought to be a great compression pose to calm the winds of the body. So Ayurvedically speaking, wind is often the element that we associate with the nervous system. And so here we can think of the shape soothing the nervous system, helping cue to our bodies that we're slowing down. On an inhale, we can soften out of this and we're just gonna pull the left knee across the body, finding a spinal twist, left arm extends out to the left and neither might touch, but think of left knee and left shoulder reaching toward the mat, not necessarily reaching, melting <laughs> toward the mat. Inhale, draw that left knee back in. Join it with the right. Again, maybe some wiggles happen here. And then left leg can straighten out on the mat. Interlace fingers the awkward way beneath the right knee. And we'll draw right knee toward right armpit. And again, finding this wind relieving posture and just notice how it feels through the body. Feel the support of the mat beneath you. Focus on lengthening exhales, making them even longer than your inhales. On an inhale, we can soften, draw the right knee across the body, extend the right arm out to the right. And again, think of right shoulder, right knee, equally melting toward the mat.
on an inhale, we can draw the right knee back in, join it with the left. And from here, we have just a few minutes left. So we'll make our way into Shavasana, but if there's any final shapes that seem desirable in your body right now, make your way through those first. When you're ready to find Shavasana, we will end in traditional vignette or in traditional Shavasana just because we've already calmed the body so much, we're gonna sink into it. As you're ready though, you can think of working the shoulder blades gently beneath the body to allow for a more open chest and easier breath. You might shake the head out side to side, do some really subtle nods, yes and no, to find that place where the spine is neutral, where the cervical spine, I should say, is neutral. Let the ankles relax, feet flopping, maybe a leg even externally opens. Let the hands be heavy, fingertips relaxed. And then soften the jaw. Let the tongue sit heavy in the mouth. Relax through the eyelids, letting even the eyeballs soften and grow heavy in their sockets. Gently invite the breath back into the body by deepening the inhales and lengthening out the exhales. Begin to infuse energy back into the limbs by Maybe just wiggling fingers and toes. Maybe circling ankles and wrists. On a deep inhale, you might even take a final full body stretch, reaching the arms overhead. And let that exhale come through the mouth. You can take your time in doing so, but begin to draw the knees in toward the chest and gently make your way to a seat through whichever method feels best to you right now. Once you've arrived, you can inhale arms out to the sides and up. Palms come together overhead. You can exhale, thumbs pausing at forehead, pausing at mouth, and coming to rest at heart center. And that we carry with us anything that we learned today on the mat, any empowerment that we cultivated, any sense of peace or grounding, Thumbs can return to forehead as we bow forward gently. The light within me recognizes and honors the light within each of you. Namaste.